Hello, and welcome to the second episode in IOTA's Future Proof webinar series. At the IOTA Foundation, we are specialists Hello. when it comes to using new technologies to, to transform industries today. Through Future Proof, we want to share this knowledge with you. We're hoping that this will inspire new ideas and help you to understand how the Internet of Things and distributed ledger technologies can enable new business. We start each webinar with a presentation from one of our experts. At the end of each webinar, there will be a short section where our experts will answer your questions from the chat here on YouTube. I'm your host, Daniel thompson Devoto from the engineering department at IOTA, and I'm really happy to introduce you today to Wilfred Pimenta. Based in Oslo, Will's background is in business development, corporate strategy, and new ventures in energy, clean tech, and infrastructure. He's been working with IOT and DLTs for the past four years. And at IOTA, he is acting head of energy, which includes leading our engagement with City Exchange. Hopefully he'll be talking about that today. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic and the screen over to Will. Here you go, have fun. Hi everybody, my name is Wilfried Pimenta. I'm the business development director at the IOTA Foundation and I'm also acting as a head of energy. So today I'll go through some uh, of the rationale uh, for leveraging on the IOTA technology uh, for smart energy application tell you a bit about how we work and provide some concrete examples. So let's go in. So the energy transition, uh, as many of you know, in the power and utility sectors, this is mainly the, the topic I will discuss today, is built on the three pillars of digitalization, decentralization, and decarbonization. And IOTA uh, seeks to support all those, those key drivers in different ways. Of course, we are a software solution. So for when it comes to digitalization, we'll, we'll, we'll power this up towards different digital twinning type of solution. Decentralization is, is embedded into the DLT technology. And when it comes to decarbonization, uh, we can see the, the, the alignment when it comes to the application domain, of course, uh, the type of solution that will uh, enable. But you can also think about uh, our technology itself. The network is very uh, efficient when it comes to energy consumption, which is a bit of a contrast uh, compared to other sort of DLTs such as blockchain. We are developing something a bit alternative. So the energy transition, we can uh, approach it like this. Uh, what we want to, to do also is to, to discuss how it's not only about uh, the power and utility sector, uh, electromobility is very important. We work in the automotive industry as well, or working around mobility as a service, and that new mobility is going to be electric. So we really work towards integrating this uh, electric mobility as part of the power system. And as you'll see in our presentation today, we're, we're going to demystify a bit more what this means and why there's a maybe uh, sort of a new sort of cross silo innovation potential behind all this energy transition. One key approach to understanding the, 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 the potential is to, to, to talk about peer-to-peer -peer energy markets. Um, and I'll take a, a chunk of my presentation later on to discuss this. Uh, what it means is that we, we, di we digitalize the, the built environment, um, things that are static, analog, and we're going to bring an IoT layer to see things uh, between different parties, different buildings that usually don't trust in, uh, one another, they are working independently. But here, by providing a common uh, source of truth that the DLT uh, enables, we're going to be able to orchestrate uh, the market a bit differently. So if you combine with this IoT enablement with market design principle, you can contemplate the idea of doing peer-to-peer -peer energy trading so that buildings batteries electric vehicles are going to be working all together in real time to exchange energy to balance the grid from within all this orchestrated by trading so we're really incentivizing the exchange of energy between those energy agents thanks to a new technology and dlt uh, can enable this through the idea of micropayments and so i'll come back to this afterwards all together, this is a big push. You know, the, the European Commission, uh, for example, is, is setting up different programs to 
enable the development of positive energy districts. Uh, and you can look at DLT as one of the key enablers for doing that transition. So the City Exchange project mentioned here is one of the, the, the EU projects we're participating to, and I'll come back to it afterwards. So this, this future is, is, is of great potential. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer energy case is, is one of the examples. But in order to achieve this, we need to go one level beneath and understand how DLT really provides value added. So IOTA addresses three major pain gains areas. Um, uh, those are three essential pillars uh, to provide uh, reliable solutions. So digital trust is, is, is a big one. And this is where it all starts when it comes to, to the relevance of distributed ledger technologies. Um, digital trust is about data integrity, cybersecurity, and privacy. So data integrity helps uh, ensure um, that the data has not been tampered with. And so this idea that um, when, for instance, in the energy domain, you have a smart meter that is going to generate data, share data with another smart meter to do, for instance, peer-to-peer -peer energy. Uh, we need to, uh, web meter receiving needs to ensure that the data has not been tampered with or not hacked. And we can utilize the immutability of distributed ledgers to provide this data integrity layer. This is really where it starts. Uh, all the other functionalities are basically add on to the data integrity. Um, so, so IOTA as a DLT provide a single source of truth, a sort of overlay around all those data exchanges in this machine to machine environment. Data integrity on top of which you build different security and access control features. Uh, when you think about smart meters at your doorsteps where people want to understand all your energy consumption and patterns as well uh, as a prosumer, um, this is going to be about handling personal data. And so we seek to, to, to address those consent management systems by utilizing our technology. And we've built also a digital identity uh, framework that you can utilize for both people, organization, and, and now machines in order to provide uh, mechanisms of access control. So this is very important. It's, it's digital trust, and it has nothing to do with monetization. It's really creating value uh, essential for orchestrating IoT-enabled applications. Um, the data monetization is the second pillar, which is a recognition that people need to be incentivized to share this data. It's not going to happen naturally. Um, if you seek to utilize a classic means of payment, there's just too much friction. It may be too slow or mainly too expensive. Uh, that's the issue. If you are into a data streaming environment, uh, where uh, smart meters, for instance, will communicate with one another. You want to have this payment mechanism happening in real time. I'll provide some very interesting example afterwards when it comes to mobility that will really uh, seek this real-time environment to operate. Um, this data monetization uh, needs to be machine ready. So we are going to help electric vehicles, uh, smart chargers, smart meters to have uh, a payment embedded. So this is very important uh, if you want to approach this uh, from an automatized uh, perspective. So the third pillar around autonomy will seek to do decentralized marketplaces, things that are really happening in the background, where we delegate rights of operations to uh, machines. Um, and uh, we need to have a new means of payment, uh, which are uh, triggered by the machines themselves. So it needs to be working on the government level uh, appropriately, but we need also really technically to have wallets inbuilt uh, the IoT devices and the, what we call machines. So IOTA provides a, a distributed ledger technology. It's open source. Uh, it's a permissionless DLT. I think the technical features uh, of the Tangle are provided in other presentations, so I won't deep dive into uh, all aspects in this presentation. Um, but it's uh, it's highly scalable, um, which you need for the smart city environment. Uh, so if you think about peer-to-peer -peer energy, where you have many transactions happening, 
um, across the ecosystem, you need to have scalable solutions so that many transactions, payments are happening uh, while you maintain a sort of zero fee uh, transaction layer. You don't want to lose too much fees in each transaction. You're going to have a data streaming environment near real time. So you need to have a very interesting, a very relevant um, uh, backbone. Um, if we jump quickly to the use case side of things, um, digital trust, uh, data monetization and autonomy, as we mentioned earlier. Um, we talked a bit about the peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace, and I'll come back to it afterwards so that you see uh, on, the, on the lower right side. Uh, those are actually very sophisticated versions if you want to go in complete decentralization uh, of the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Um, uh, before this happens, there's a lot of things you need to combine that you find in both digital trust and data monetization. Uh, the first one is around IoT edge and security and privacy. Um, and the second one is the, the real-time paper use, and all this needs to be embedded into the devices. So I'll take some of those examples later on, um, but it's important to see how those different use cases can be combined in order to serve the, the greater vision of a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So when it comes to the, this uh, vision, um, uh, I root this into the, the market demand side. The European Commission is putting a lot of efforts and providing grant support to create positive energy districts. One of uh, the bigger projects that were granted is City Exchange. Uh, it's a Horizon 2020 project with 32 partners, including IOTA, that seeks to develop and test peer-to-peer uh, -peer energy uh, marketplace. So we are going to create positive energy districts where those districts are able to balance from within uh, their energy uh, required. This is going to be fed by green energy, so you will combine solar rooftops uh, with batteries and electric vehicles, and all this will be orchestrated in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. This project brings together multiple parties from municipalities to private sector uh, to academia and startups. There's two lighthouse projects uh, that are going to host the first demonstrators. Um, one of them is in Norway, it's Trondheim, the technological pole. And the second one is Limerick in Ireland. Once the initial demonstrator in those two cities will be performed, we'll be looking at replicating this in other cities across Europe. What we are looking into is to develop flexibility marketplace. There's a design uh, of a market that has been uh, uh, set up. And we are now going to translate this into a software solution where you have a marketplace, where you have a price determined in real time. And um, on the basis of a trusted digital twin. And IOTA is going to be utilized to provide the data integrity across the marketplace. And we're going to uh, contribute to securing the IOTA edge and the data sharing. We'll utilize also the, the payment part of IOTA, uh, the IOTA token, to demonstrate real-time machine-to-machine uh, payment potential. Before we can achieve all this peer-to-peer -peer decentralized marketplace type of setup, uh, we can go back to some of the more edge case that we've looked into uh, in the past. Some of our partners like uh, LNLN and the Nexus have demonstrated the, the future potential for machine-to-machine -machine payments between an electric vehicle and a smart charger. So that was done a few years ago. Uh, you can see here, it was a mini Tesla. That was the beginning of the adventure. <laughs> um, the payment here is done from a, a vehicle to the charger as you plug the cable. So you don't need to be pre-identified as a driver or a client of the charger. You simply allow a connection through the cable and the payment is done in real time as the electricity flows. When you unplug the cable, settlement has been done and you can move on. So the electric uh, vehicle uh, will be able to, to work in a much more open and interoperable environment. So you take this idea of a smart charger, uh, you understand you, you need to build a sort of wallet technology. Uh, there will be a wallet inside uh, the vehicle and a wallet inside the charger. 
One of our partners in the mobility sector, like Jaguar Land Rover, has uh, undertaken some development on the car e-wallet side. This wallet technology will be utilized for the charging side, uh, but it can be utilized for tolling or parking. The vehicle itself becomes a data marketplace that can trade data in real time, in and out, uh, using the IOTA technology. So th this uh, combination is, is quite powerful, and we seek to typically take this combination, bring it to a smart city environment, and start showcasing how this can work. So we did this, uh, bring um, some vehicles uh, to the city of Trondheim. Um, and we demonstrated not only uh, the, the car e-wallet uh, and smart charging potential, but we showcase how this could be extended in the future if you bring a, an additional layer, which is energy traceability. So uh, you need to envision a scenario where uh, I am uh, owning a, a Jaguar. I'm going to come uh, at uh, the, the, the bottom of this uh, great building here, the powerhouse that creates excess energy. And I'm going to be able through with the vehicle and its dashboard uh, to pay for charging. But I will require green charging. And the vehicle will be able to authenticate the source of energy feed and reward through uh, the IOTA payment at the source of energy. So in principle, we could allow the building uh, the, the vehicle to pay uh, directly the source of energy. It could be the building itself, but as a matter of fact, if uh, we provide the solar panels, a uh, digital wallet themselves, we could actually pay the wallet, the, the solar panels themselves directly. And you can see how you can take this type of, uh, of proof of concept or use case, bring it into a peer-to-peer -peer energy environment, like I shared uh, earlier in City Exchange. And a new layer of innovation is going to start to emerge. So this proof of concept was showcased um, uh, in 2019, in August, for the grand opening of the Entra Powerhouse, this building you see on the picture, uh, located in Trondheim. And uh, contributing companies were NG Lab, Powerhouse Entra, uh, City Exchange were sort of a co-host of the test bed, and Jaguar and Rover brought uh, two vehicles on site. The way we, we work those types of use cases in the energy domain is that we need to bring uh, multiple parties together. Uh, we have a dialogue uh, with the municipality. We bring some talent with academia. Um, we brought uh, energy expertise from uh, NG Lab and Jaguar Land Rover and their car wallet technology on site. Uh, here you see uh, many of our stakeholders associated with our ecosystem work on energy, uh, working together in Chandaim, um, doing an ideation process, filtering the potential and starting uh, with a use case that was very simple. So the traceability case is, is a minimal viable ecosystem and a proof of concept that can scale uh, with the support of a, a greater ecosystem play. And we've provided different uh, videos and uh, interesting reports and thought leadership uh, to start aggregating the ecosystem further. Um, when you look at those cases, uh, some patterns start to, to appear. So we, one way to understand the problem is that we have new use cases emerging, things like peer-to-peer -peer energy communities, vehicle-to-grid, vehicle-to-X, smart charging, lots of different sort of innovation coming in, and they seek to uh, get integrated in the built environment. Uh, this sort of creates some tension because you sometimes have a lack of interoperability and scalability is very hard to achieve uh, if you have uh, sort of vendor lock-in systems uh, from the private sector. So something is needed in order to uh, fully expand the potential. But one way to look at IOTA is to see it as an open source software, part of the future open and transparent digital infrastructure of smart cities. Something located between the built environment, uh, the physical infrastructure and hardware, and all those new digital services in the verticals. This will provide an open source and permissionless DLT that everybody can leverage to build solutions. And this works from a digital trust layer as well as payment. So coming back to, to 
this landscape of, of possibilities. Um, we talked about the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. We talked a bit about the traceability of energy attributes. So those are interesting innovation from an energy standpoint. But all this starts uh, from an IoT edge and security. One of the biggest challenge when it comes to applying blockchain or distributed ledger for any sort of application is to resolve the problem of garbage in, garbage out. The immutability of the ledger has some limitation. If something can be hacked at the source, I think the, the whole solution just collapses. So we are very concerned on our side to really uh, handle the security layer at the edge. And we're taking necessary steps to build an A to Z solution. So out of our ecosystem, uh, some development has been done on the hardware as well. Um, and we see the development of uh, IoT developers kit that will be provided for developers in academia. And we work uh, with some of our hardware and semiconductor uh, companies in our ecosystem to build future uh, production ready solutions. And so this will help uh, those IoT devices and machines with new edge functionalities around data integrity, security and access control, micropayment, and eventually some new services will emerge or plug in uh, towards the integration in decentralized marketplaces like peer-to-peer -peer energy. So some takeaways about uh, distributed ledger and its relevance to the energy domain. Uh, removing the middleman, uh, which is the typical case for blockchain and energy, I can bring cost efficiency, of course, in the existing power and utility value chain. Um, but combined with IoT, DLT can enable new solutions and new business models that are cross silos. And we illustrated this today, where you can see the power sector meeting the mobility sector and the real estate. When you look into preparing production ready solution, it all starts with digital trust and security and e-privacy before even talking about the data monetization. And so we are taking steps to really work uh, towards the IoT industry for that reason. And when we investigate use cases for our partners, it really takes an ecosystem collaboration to make it happen. So fostering new methodologies around ecosystem strategies and open innovations are quite essential to that. So as a foundation, we, we are working as a, as a non-for-profit and we develop the software open source. Uh, we are about 110 employees now in 23 countries. So we have a sort of global presence and we can work with different stakeholders from public and private uh, to, to, to create an ecosystem of collaboration and showcase the potential. The, the nature of the solution we, we provide is not specific to the energy domain. And we really work with mobility, supply chain and so on to create a cross silo co-creation ecosystems. The vision is really to create an economy of things. Um, we call it also the machine to machine economy that serves the purpose of the citizens through automation. There's three phases to IOTA. If you want to engage, we are a global team uh, with people working with research and engineering and development of code. We have a developers community um, and we have people working with applied research and innovation as well as technology development and integration support. You can work directly with the Tangle. Uh, you can go online and actually start uh, using some of our blueprints, some of which are very specific to the energy domain uh, and start innovating by yourself. If you want to be proactive towards those use cases, especially uh, in those smart city contexts where they're really cross silo, I think we, we really welcome you to work with our ecosystem of partners. So we really uh, investigate those cross industry uh, aspects. And this is what we tend to foster is, is a collaborative ecosystem. So I hope uh, this presentation uh, was uh, interesting, giving you some first seed of thoughts for developing new solutions uh, with IOTA in the energy domain. And uh, feel free to reach out. Um, um, looking forward to collaborating. Well, uh, thanks, Will. Uh, that was awesome. So there's a, a few questions that came in, and I really thank you all for asking them. 
And we're going to try and answer all of the ones that are really in the scope of what Will has been talking about. So we're going to kind of ignore the ones about comparisons with other cryptocurrencies or uh, things of that nature and really focus on, you know, these generic questions that came up about the need for public-private partnerships and, and the relationship to academia. But before we get to that, I've got one really burning question that I want to ask Will, and I hope you forgive me. I mean, a couple of days ago, it was Earth Day, and our planet has just seen some massive transformation. You, you take people out of the picture, you keep them locked up at home, and the Earth just starts to reset itself, you know? And it's not just the animals in the, the nature that are coming back. We're also seeing lower numbers of accidents in cities. And it really kind of begs the question, Will, do, do you think that in the, the near future, our smart cities are going to be able to uh, help us maintain a, a healthy environment? What do you think? Yeah, I think, the, I mean, the, the, the trend towards a sustainable smart city has been triggered way before COVID-19. Uh, but they, the, the, those whole events are putting a bit more pressure on the existing system, especially centralized systems. And uh, it's opening up a bit more awareness uh, towards citizens in terms of uh, taking care of each other and maybe giving us a, a time to reflect about the long term, right? I think it's creating a, a pocket of opportunity to, to rethink things because usually we've been so much head down <laughs> on our day-to-day -day tasks. And so concepts that are more long-term perspective around sustainability are, are starting to, to, to probably appear. There's some direct consequence on the, on the energy markets in general. Um, smart cities are, are primarily uh, going electric and, and decarbonized. And what we see is that in the current system, I mean, the, in the COVID-19 context, the, the oil and gas market has been really put under pressure. And um, we saw the, the price of the oil and gas recently going completely down. Um, that's going to accelerate, accelerate uh, electrification in general. People are going to see that the, 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 the stranded assets potentially of the oil and gas sector are, are going to have to, to be put aside. Uh, so I think the whole thing is, is supporting, for instance, in Europe, the, the policy which is aiming at electrification at what we call positive energy districts. Uh, which is typically the topic of the city exchange project. Um, I also think uh, that th there may be some trigger points to towards those ideas of smart communities or neighborhoods um, that's in the key central cities where we all have gathered ourselves. Uh, there's, there's obviously some big pressure points right now, and we realize we can work more remotely. So it's possible that we're going to decentralize a bit the way we orchestrate our work, and we're going to have phenomenon around smart community. And the smart community aspects, think about it as a smart neighborhood, it can also be uh, illustrated by smart energy community. So the idea that you know, we put solar panels on our rooftops, I sell my electricity to my neighbor, and we create you know, more self-sufficient communities and neighborhoods. So those are interesting trends that may appear out of the COVID-19. There's also some other part, but it goes way beyond energy, of course, which is simply the need to trust uh, remote access uh, to, to data from industrial sites, for example. We haven't been able now to, to travel as much as we want, and we want to trust more this idea of remote, remote access, remote control and automation in general. Okay, well, let me, let me just try and, and break this down so I understand it and uh, try and bring it back to a question that Arna asked. So what I'm hearing is there's a need to find a bridge between the commune and uh, the, the people, and it sounds like there's policy work that needs to be done, and yet I still feel like there needs to be uh, you know, academia involved. And, and how do you see all of these, these public private partnerships really, you know, working in practice, just going on off the question that Arna, Tag Arna asked, uh, how, how do people take part in test beds? How can communities, small or large, get involved? Well, 
Oh, so it's very important uh, to, to, to recognize we, we're serving the interests of the citizens and even business or public sector are, are here to serve the interest uh, of the citizen. So in the context of a smart city, we need to, to approach it uh, towards a citizen-centric innovation domain. And it's not only a matter of business, it's really all the stakeholders that needs to come together to serve the interests of uh, the, the people, the real users. And it is uh, a public-private partnership approach that we need to have. The tension, uh, let's say, in the old days has been public sector is not notorious for driving innovation actively uh, at high speed. So they're generally creating the, the general framework to foster this and business is here to bring uh, the speed and the risky capital. But there's a, an increasing transformation now towards smart cities that are taking on board uh, you know, the, the challenge of driving this themselves. And therefore, public-private partnership is going to be more and more important. And when we think about uh, solutions like, uh, like IOTA's DLT, we belong to this open and transparent digital infrastructure. Uh, it provides an open source layer that people can leverage to scale and so on. And this is typically something the public sector can take on board their stack. Right, they are going to develop some platforms. That's what we see in the city exchange. The idea is to create a sort of platform that is orchestrated for, you know, uh, with the, the active support of the municipalities, for example. Um, are, you, and, are you finding, well, sorry, but are you finding that the, um, the private sector is actually able to be more agile than the public sector? Like, I mean, if you just think about the way in which a, uh, a company can choose to implement something, it's a, a little bit of a different process than how uh, a commune might go about doing that. Yeah, so, I mean, private sector has the ability to jump in and, and drive innovation much faster. Uh, the challenge is that they're looking for short-term KPIs and return on investments indicators. But the fundamental transformation is driven by sustainability and human-centric ecosystem, right? We want to have a better community. So we need to bring those parties together. You have a short-term need for profit from business, and you have a long-term perspective that the, the public sector serves uh, on behalf of the citizens. And we need to make those things come together. And the challenge in the, in the current context is that uh, the speed of innovation is increasing tremendously. So we need to bring mentalities together. So we need to foster the idea of agile public private partnership. So we need to help public sector go faster and creating test beds, for instance, for a municipality is one way to catalyze this process, opening up the gates of the city so that innovation can come in and do their, their stuff. Uh, in between, there is a role, and a question was raised around like, the role of academia. Uh, I think academia is extremely important because they are the neutral ground. There's a lot of technologies and IOTA is one of them that needs to come into the loop and we're dealing with very sensitive aspects around digital identity, e-privacy of people, uh, security matters. And we need to have a trusted party, neutral, that is able to, at high speed, <laughs> assess the viability of those technologies and help facilitate this matchmaking. And that's really what is happening in the context of the City Exchange, where the University uh, of NTNU in Trondheim, which is a technological pool, is uh, the project manager for the project and brings research capabilities into this public-private partnership play. So uh, taking this a step further, there was a really excellent question that Federico asked in the chat earlier where uh, they wrote, in order to achieve these sort of microtransactions between machines, you need to have a widespread adoption. I, I think that that might be the key here, don't you agree? Yeah, I mean, you, you want to have a striving ecosystem uh, that is able to, to transact. The reality today is that we can have a on and off uh, uh, you know, exchange of IOTAs towards fiat currencies, and this can still be facilitated, facilitated and then you can push uh, IOTAs into a sort of marketplace. So you can have those dependencies towards you know, normal fiat uh, uh, currencies and, and the micropayment in between. Uh, to strive, of course, uh, a very efficient system, you want to scale this. So for peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace, for example, I think the key to cost efficiency and, and benefits for everyone is to scale this as much as possible. 
And that's why test beds are important because it provides a playground where we can bring a lot of different parties, regardless of the digital service they're thinking, they can all come into a similar place and start interacting together. And IOTA will be used as a common digital infrastructure to facilitate the interactions. And so what's, for instance, in the City Exchange project, we started that there's a strong energy rational, but electric vehicles are here as well. So there's, there's a touch point towards the, the mobility sector through the, the smart charging. And what we're gonna see is that what seems to be more like a peer-to-peer -peer energy market between buildings or batteries extends towards the electromobility. So test beds are important because they're gonna be a, a trigger point. They're gonna help aggregate the different parties to innovate together. And you will see a lot of spin-offs starting to appear and reach more scalability. When around scalability, I think one of the key advantages of technologies like IOTA, I mean, the aspect, the, the fact that it's open source, that means there's no vendor lock-in at the level of IOTA, uh, will help bring transparency and will allow, for instance, different cities to start interacting together using a common infrastructure that is transparent. A classic private play into this would be to bring a, a stack, a vendor lock-in, and you sell one solution for a city and then you may sell another solution for another city. And we need to have interoperability. And this is what IOTA provides by being an open source. You can allow people to develop on the same basis and eventually bridge the different cities together. So a test bed in a city can scale to a district and eventually a city itself. And then there will be a replication game to bring other cities in the, in the loop. That's also in the city exchange project part of the, the scope. So that projects that are initiated now um, in Trondheim, in Norway, or in Ireland, in Limerick, those, those models once tested will be able to replicate in other European municipalities. Okay, so I, I'm one of those, those kind of engineers who really need something concrete, right? Um, and, and, and thankfully, AR asked a really great question uh, about use cases for a DSO company. If you don't know, DSO can mean distribution system operator. I think that's what they mean in this case. So uh, how could IOTA actually fit in here? And maybe as a follow-up question, you could talk about how uh, or, or what companies are actually doing today, what our partners are doing. Yeah. So, I mean, one take on it is, is that the DSOs are, so the, the local grids, uh, they have to deal with this transformation of the energy sector where distributely a lot of new energy sources appear. A solar panel, rooftop, uh, on top of a building, uh, geothermal, small wind, all this is sort of putting pressure on the normal traditional grid. And the questions that the grid operators are going to think about is whether they are going to strengthen the grid with traditional means to so basically have a central grid, which is really strong to absorb all this new flow. Or could there be another way instead of bringing this expenditure uh, on, the, on everybody's back is rather to say, let's try to decentralize the system and balance the grid from within. So using technologies like IOTA, you can orchestrate peer-to-peer -peer energy systems that allows local communities, for example, to balance the grid from within. So that's you know, a, a good share of what we are also doing in the city exchange. And as a matter of fact, we then have a DSO that is reinventing possibly its business model because they are shifting from a centralized mindset to the idea that we can empower the community to manage itself. But you do need an orchestrator. So this is why you need to have a sort of platform, a public-private partnership around it. And all this will result in a much more uh, efficient system uh, cost-wise. There will be less expenditure and everybody will start to have a more decentralized uh, contribution uh, to, to invest and manage the, the network. Cool. Um... It seems like we're almost out of time, but maybe you could talk about um, the Tangle EE. I think that was maybe one way for companies to get directly involved. Yes, yeah, so so early this year, uh, we initiated the Tangle Enterprise Edition, the Tangle EE, 
as a collaboration with the Eclipse Foundation and several enterprises and academics. Uh, together, the, the working group uh, will host a collaborative efforts going towards co-development, discussions around standardization, how do we ensure market fit and so on. And two different topics have emerged uh, to, to get started with, which is digital identity and everything that revolves around it in terms of transferable credentials, identities that can be also applied to the IoT domain, not only individuals. Um, and another topic is related to the centralized marketplace. And so typically a peer-to-peer -peer energy market is a decentralized marketplace. So those sort of building blocks uh, that are hosted in the Tangle EE provides a, a way to interact between all those enterprises and academics to discuss the underlying building blocks that needs to be put in place to facilitate lots of different applications. So there will be some collaborative work uh, undergoing into the Tangle EE. And energy will obviously be part of it. And we have uh, Energinet, uh, the grid transmission operator from Denmark uh, that is uh, involved in the Tangle EE. Um, and will be particularly interested in investigating the digital trust aspects and digital identity and how we can you know, trust the edge to support all this transformation in the energy sector like we, we discussed. Uh, we have a NG lab, for example, CRIGEN, uh, which is the research and development corporate center of the NG group uh, that is also involved in this work. And there's so a different perspective. You, you will have public sector participants, private sector participants, and academics also into the loop that will all together start shaping those essential building blocks. So therefore, it's an invitation to all parties that wants to be proactive at that level of the co-development to, to get engaged. Um, there's other ways, of course, to get started with working with IOTA, and they can reach out to, to me when it comes to energy, for example, uh, where we, uh, we can support on technical support uh, uh, towards use cases, from proof of concept to use case developments and eventually test beds. Uh, the CT exchange project is a typical example also of a grant scheme. Uh, so this means we, we join consortium um, in order to get public funding so that we, as a consortium, build different solutions and aim at demonstrator projects. So we have different ways of interacting uh, and we try to listen a bit to your general need. We like the idea to be fast moving and bring innovation towards uh, towards the market. And sometimes it's it's more beneficial also to, to do small steps. So minimize uh, the, the complexity of the problems to be solved. And then we can deliver those things. Uh, we like a lot the idea of collaboration around this. So we, we always take on board and account for our general ecosystem and try to do matchmaking. So on the go, when partners join the IOLA Foundation work, we always think about, you know, would you be interested to cooperate with some startups that we know about? Do you want to work with a complementary partner, either from public or private sector, or from, from energy or mobility? Basically, we can do matchmaking and deliver projects all together. Wow, that was great. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks for your super insightful questions. We're going to wrap up right now. Um, this has been IOTA's second webinar in the Future Proof series. Um, if you just tuned in, you probably heard Will talk about the two core aspects of the Tangle EE. Next week, we're going to be discussing one of them, namely decentralized marketplaces and the next generation of platform models. And in one of the upcoming webinars, we'll also be talking about a unified identity. It's super exciting stuff. Um, we'll be posting the sign-up links for the webinar in the description of this video, and we'll be sending it to you in the follow-up email that you should be getting if you signed up for this uh, webinar. Um, speaking of which, please like this video and follow us. I know it sounds uh, kind of like uh, people being greedy, but it really helps us to get our message out there. And that's kind of the, the goal of all of this. So if you want to learn more about IOTA, uh, like DB just asked, uh, you know, getting access, just reach out to us on any of the channels. We've got lots of people out there who are really looking forward to helping you help yourself. So um, finally, just to wrap it up, you can expand your DLT knowledge with our official learning partner, 
the IOTA Foundation's official learning partner, and that is the IOT1 Academy, right? So you can get unprecedented access to IOTA onboarding courses for developers and managers and quickly gain broad knowledge about IOTA and DLT in general. So enjoy amazing learning content co-authored with the IOTA Foundation at https training.iota.org. Stay safe.